Hello and welcome to Testing the Theory. Today we'll be looking at VTVL suborbital flight. Some of you may know that as of November 23rd, 2015, vertical takeoff, vertical landing, suborbital rockets became fact rather than theory. That's why this week we will be more proving the fact than testing the theory. But it provides a great platform to talk about the New Shepard rocket developed by Blue Origin. Specifically, I'd like to talk about the idea of automated booster stages and their benefits and limitations. In Kerbal Space Program, I'll be using Kerbal OS, and I'll only be using one computer which has a maximum memory of 10 kilobytes. Kerbal OS allows you to automate flight by loading a script into the computer part and running that script executing commands that can change your direction, throttle, and about anything you can think of on most rockets. So to begin with, let's talk about guidance. There's very little to be found on the guidance systems or computers of the New Shepard rocket, but without guidance on the way up, wind, mass property uncertainty, engine misalignment and a whole host of other things could add up and put the rocket several miles away from the landing site. New Shepard lands a few hundred metres away from its launch site at a separate landing site, and this sort of accuracy would be impossible without an advanced guidance system. How does my test in Kerbal Space Program compare? Well, as Kerbal Space Program doesn't have wind, variable manufacturing tolerances or misalignments, I decided that we needed to have a more difficult guidance challenge. Sticking an SAS on a rocket can maintain a fair amount of accuracy, so to make sure it was a difficult landing, we'll be launching our capsule from Kerbal Space Center to the island runway over 30 kilometers away, and then returning the boost section to the launch pad at KSC. Unlike New Shepard, we'll need to do three burns. What you're seeing now is the guided turn that brings the rocket up to the required speed to release the capsule and have it land safely on the island runway. Even though New Shepard goes virtually straight up and down, don't underestimate the programming required. In teaching myself to use Kerbal OS over the past two weeks, I've gained a whole new appreciation for how difficult it is to accurately repeat even simple manoeuvres in Kerbal Space Program. As you rise, atmosphere decreases, but your speed increases drag, and floating point precision adds up really quickly to put you far from your desired trajectory, and that's just on the way up. The speed I deploy the capsule at has to take into account the drag it experiences on the way back to Kerbin. I had no idea when I started this over two weeks ago. I thought I would lock the steering to a heading, set the engine to burn for 110 seconds, and then it would sail to the correct location every time. Not that you can't do that with Kerbal OS, but where you're pointing and the direction you're thrusting doesn't actually add up to the direction you're going due to cumulative floating point inaccuracies. You need to have active guidance. I used old-fashioned compass headings and geolocation to determine my heading and ground speed, though Kerbal OS does allow for vector math and vector-based guidance. Those of you interested in the deeper functions of vector-based guidance should check out some of the videos on Seth Persigale's channel, as he's been working on Falcon 9 star landing from orbital velocities with Kerbal OS. If you want to test the floating point inaccuracies, try yourself. Put a small engine, some SAS and a parachute on the pad, launch and see where it lands. The higher you go, the more inaccuracy you introduce. I'm a very new programmer, but even so, I managed to get equations and program loops which put me at an 80 km altitude suborbital flight that would drop the capsule right in front of the hangars. Our capsule is only going to 80 kilometers, which is 20 kilometers less than New Shepard, but 10 kilometers further into space. New Shepard barely crosses the Kármán line, the generally accepted edge of Earth's atmosphere, but on Kerbin the equivalent will be somewhere between 55 and 70 kilometers. The New Shepard capsule itself has room for six and has a weight limit of around five tons. This includes room for experiments and equipment, as New Shepard is designed to give people or scientists around three minutes of microgravity.
The New Shepard booster stage uses adjustable air brakes at the top of the booster stage to slow and guide the rocket as well as small fins, which you probably wouldn't even notice if you weren't looking. These all provide a great amount of guidance and stability. I needed to use air brakes on the capsule however, as the capsule doesn't slow down enough in the atmosphere to safely open the chutes. I decided to forego air brakes on the booster stage for that reason. One of the greatest strengths of New Shepard is the engine, the BE-3, which, unlike most rocket engines, can throttle down to 40% and provide a stable hover. For comparison, the Falcon 9 can only come down to 60% and the Space Shuttle main engine to 67%. I cheat a little in that I allow my engine below that for the retro burn, and my hover value is somewhere close to 35% throttle at the end of the mission. At landing, the New Shepard engine dynamically gimbals to allow it to balance on the way down. I've actually locked the gimbal on my engine and will be using RCS thrusters to bring the booster stage back to the launch pad. The reason behind this is because it was far easier to program the control of the RCS translation than powered directed flight at such low speeds. I think we've proven that automated powered soft landing recovery of booster stages is possible in Kerbal Space Program as well as real life. At this point I'd like to say a special thank you to the people on the Kerbal OS subreddit who were very helpful with all my questions and queries. Dumbaratu and Hvasengi, the current developers of Kerbal OS, as well as El Wandra, KV Cummins and Eurelea. I really recommend Kerbal OS and Kerbal Space Program as an introduction to programming. Not because it's easy, but because it is so rewarding when it works. Thank you for testing the theory with me, and I'll see you soon for more.